Come, said my soul. Such verses from my body let us write, for we are one. That should I have to return, or long, long hence in other spheres. There, to some group of mates, the chance resuming. Ever with pleased smile, I may keep on. Ever and ever, yet the verses only. As first, I hear and now. Signing for soul and body, said to them my name. Did you write this? No. It's written. What should I call you? Max? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> call me whatever you like. Oswald is the pawn. The night's determined Kiroi. So Japan is the genesis. You can get away. Midori lived in Yokohama. It's not too late. One of the darkest days in American history. The day President Kennedy was assassinated. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You'll excuse the fact that I'm out of breath, but about 10 or 15 minutes ago, a tragic thing from all indications at this point has happened in the city of Dallas. Let me quote to you this. President Kennedy and Governor John Colony have been cut down by assassin's bullets in downtown Dallas. I was on Simmons Freeway earlier, and even the freeway was jam-packed with spectators waiting to shadow. The has been placed in the building from where the bullets were fired at President Kennedy. Oswald has been charged with the murder of police officer J.D. Tippett, who had gone to apprehend Oswald. I work in that building. Naturally, if I work in that building, yes, sir. Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested, but then shot dead. Was he the culprit? The US government kept certain documents about JFK's assassination secret for decades. President Trump withheld their full release. What did he have to fear? NHK enlisted experts to help uncover vital information that radically challenges the official account. Oswald is said to have acted alone, but was he supported by some kind of organization? In time, people who hold the key to clarifying what happened have broken their silence. But he was clearly out of his gourd, out of it. He kept, was it, is it a treachery? He's a traitor? He's awful. He shouldn't be president. It's not an Oliver Stone movie with, with respect for him. It's not that. Planned by professionals with, with the intention no one would ever know. Who might we see in the shadows behind Oswald? And what prompted him to blurt out? I'm just a patsy, patsy, patsy. What did Oswald mean when he said, I'm just a patsy? For 30 years, former Washington Post reporter Jefferson Morley has been chasing the truth about Oswald and JFK. It was kind of this contrived series of events that was presented in a very simplistic way uh, to the Warren Commission. Who were the individuals behind the manipulation of Oswald and the assassination? He focused on a fact that shook the interpretation of Oswald as a lone operative. The day after President Kennedy was killed, most US newspapers described the suspect, Oswald, in much the same terms.
In fact, a group had fed this information to the media in order to cast Oswald as the perpetrator. Morley has tracked down the address of a man who was in that group. But he's not talking. Oh, it was definitely him. It was definitely him. Oh, he never opened the door, and he never spoke. Trying to talk to as many of them as possible. You know, what happened to JFK is still an open question, and people are going to be interested in the answer. So I'll always be interested in the answer. A group of 66 distinguished campaigners, including Kennedy assassination experts, helped us uncover new information. The Trump administration postponed the release of thousands of documents, but by piecing together fragments of released data, a picture emerges of a shadowy organization. Oswald served in the U.S. Marine Corps. Military records show that he enlisted at age 17. Then, starting in 1957, he spent two years at a naval air station in Atsugi, near Tokyo. Hello, nice to meet you. Hello, How good to you? see you, Dick Russell. Kennedy assassination researcher Dick Russell has been chasing the assassination case for 45 years. I think Japan is very important in the scenario that brings Lee Harvey Oswald eventually to assassinate the president, because Japan is the genesis, in that sense, of what happened later. The place where a triumphant General MacArthur landed after World War II, Atsugi, launched Oswald on the assassin's path. Race cars in the coffee factory. Race cars in the coffee factory. Race cars in the coffee factory. <laughs> Suggest there's a lot of whores in the Soviet uranium facilities. <laughs> yeah, as Volkovich keeps track of them on radar. <laughs> yeah, well, he should be keeping track of virgins, not whores. Virgins, where? <laughs> Don't mind them, Oswald. They're just a bunch of grunts. But what do you guys mean by a race car in a coffee factory? You don't know, Stel? Coffee factory is us, the Marine Air Control Service Group. Race car. Is that U-2 surveillance plane? It's top secret. The officers won't even breathe a word of it. But if you saw the radar, you know. Ain't that right, Oswalkovich? <laughs> you know all about that, wouldn't you? Hey, Oswalkovich! Hey, Oswald. In fact, when we first saw him, when he first came to our outfit, we thought that he was underage. He was always alone. He never hardly talked to anybody. He kept to himself. But the only thing I ever saw him do was read. He was a t person that I would call an introvert into himself. He, uh, when he talked about his high school days in Texas, about getting the crap beat out of him and stuff because he was different, whatever. So I think he joined the Marine Corps to get out of the draft. He's just really a different individual. I, I remember uh, Bugs was, had his camera around his neck because he used to have that when he'd do different things. You know, Bugs, where the hell are you going? And he said, uh, I want to go at the end of the runway. You two will be coming in on He said, I want to get some pictures of it. He said, this is fantastic history. I thought, yeah, that would be something, you know, to have a picture of the U2 that, in the news. In the Marines, Oswald served as a radar operator.
The US had recently begun operating the top secret U-2 spy plane. With the Cold War intensifying, U-2s flying from Atsugi were keeping Soviet activities under surveillance. Anyway, man. Hey, how's Volkovich? <laughs> Marks again? Oh, you dirty Soviet spy. Hey! Hey, guys, he's got one of Hitler's books, too. <laughs> Get over here. We're gonna shove a bottle of vodka, virgin missiles, we'll do it! Get off! Some action. What the hell time do you think this is? Sergeant Oswald has been bringing in Russian newspapers and writings by Karl Marx. He's a bad influence, sir. You stay. The rest of you, get out of here. Hey, 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 Sergeant. <laughs> Normally, I'd say understanding a wide variety of ideas was a good thing. But for someone like you, it can be toxic. You need to spend more time working out and less time with your head in a book. Do you hear me? I asked you a question, Oswald. Do you hear me? Yes, Sergeant. That's the place to be. He would always talk about us being imperialists and uh, following the wrong government. And... Under current US imperialism, we Americans, you Japanese, and our workers are being exploited. Yeah. Our souls are ruled by enterprises. Religion and education are used as tools to oppress the people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sooner or later, Pretty animated, huh? Yeah. You don't want to listen to them. They're a bunch of lads. I'm interested. I don't want to be used as a tool of military invasion. Fight against American soldiers in uniforms! Never thought I'd meet a bunch of revolutionaries in Japan. And you must be the leader. Nice to meet you. I'm Robert. Robert Nolan. The man introduced himself as Robert Nolan. But his real name was Richard Case Nagel. He was a covert operative with close links to a certain organization. The CIA. The Central Intelligence Agency is mainly engaged in gathering intelligence outside US borders. On one occasion, in court testimony, Nagel said, in November 1957, I was recruited for a CIA project that supposedly was a counter-espionage project. Russell, who has been tracing Oswald's story for decades, obtained a statement directly from Nagel. For Nagel and here for Oswald. Nagel said he had met with Oswald off base. Queen Bee, which was in the, the uh, Ginza section of Tokyo. Nagel told me that he met Oswald in the Queen Bee. The Queen Bee was a high-end nightclub in Tokyo's Ginza district, catering to US servicemen. 
he was privy to the knowledge that that hostesses inside the, that club were being used by the KGB to try to get information out of uh, American servicemen. with your face. Don't you want to go to the Soviet Union and be a revolutionary? Listen, from this moment on, you're no longer Lee Harvey Oswald. What's that supposed to mean? Shall we dance? Later. Dance under a different name. There are women in here whose strings are being pulled by the Soviets. If you become friends with them, you might get to go to your dream land, USSR. Naturally, they will approach you because they're after US military intelligence. So, if you hate America that much, you could leak military secrets. One lucky man. Care to dance? I'm not much of a dancer, but... Hey, don't fall in love now. Did you come to Japan to study? No. So, are you from Yokosuka? Or Atsugi? Uh... There are women in here whose strings are being pulled by the Soviets. <laughs> Atsugi. You've got a sixth sense, don't you? That's right. I work as a pilot. Wow. What's your name? Midori. Midori. <laughs> Green in Japanese. Green? Mm. I see. Not red, then. So the, the hostesses, like Midori, were eager to seduce certain American soldiers to try to get information. Oswald had girlfriends at the Queen Bee. Oswald's girl was older than he, lived in Yokohama, and was named Midori, M-I-D-O-R-I-I. -I. Oswald's mission seems to have been to give false information to one of the hostesses who was working on behalf of the Soviets from them, and Oswald would have been a significant one because he was a radar operator working in the U-2 program and would have known about the spy flights that were going over the Soviet Union. Oswald openly professed his interest in Marxism. From childhood, he had dreamed of being a spy. I want to get away from that man.
What should I call you? Anything you like. <laughs> Max? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> call me whatever you like. The night's determined glory. You speak Russian, then? Japanese women are amazing. When Americans take over, we learn English. When the USSR take over, we learn Russian. Mom, Mom. I read Marx when I was 15. Have you heard of the manifesto of the Communist Party? Mom. At that time, it was the only place in my life that had any light shining. It gave me hope. Now I know it was a defining moment in my life. That's the light. Still shine for you? I'm not sure. Ten thousand years from now. People will read about us in history books. I want history to see me as a hero. Even though people always made fun of me. My mother was awful. My father was already dead when I was born. Mom. Mom. No. I'll be back late. I don't know how many times she remarried after that. Every time we moved, I... Every time we moved, I... Every time we moved, I... It's okay. Slowly. Take your time. I want to know more about you. How would a poor radar technician get to the Soviet Union? You can get away. It's not too late. Nagel would was somehow involved in Oswald's later so-called defection uh, to the Soviet Union. He was going under was orders from either the CIA or an agency connected to the CIA. Whether prodded by Nagel or guided by Midori, Oswald left the Marine Corps and sought asylum in the Soviet Union. Later, Oswald's defection would be cited as proof of a commitment to communism, supposedly his motive for assassinating Kennedy. Ah, Lee Harvey Oswald. I've come to Moscow to return my US passport and renounce my American citizenship. Hang on, son. I understand the implications of what I intend to do. I already know what you will tell me. I don't need to hear sermons or warnings. Let's not waste time. If you have the papers, I will sign them and be out of your way. I have already written a letter to the Supreme Soviet and applied for citizenship. Why do you wish to renounce your US citizenship? It's based on my political beliefs. I'm a Marxist. Marxist? 
Well, you're in for a life of eternal isolation. I was told you'd try to talk me out of it. They were right. What do you mean? Never mind. Do you have any other questions? Oswald's suspicious behavior again hints at a CIA role behind the scenes. The CIA asserts to the present day that it had no contact with Oswald. But is that true? This is a declassified list of people who were under CIA surveillance at that time. Oswald's name is on the list. The CIA began watching him on November 9, 1959, just after he crossed over to the Soviet Union. And one possibility raised by researchers is that Oswald's defection was actually a CIA operation. John Newman, one of the 66 in the Campaign for Truth, is an eminent JFK researcher. He has spent half his life reviewing six million related documents. Oswald is a pawn. Pawns are disposable. It was a possibility that he was a false defector. When did you start considering the renunciation of your US citizenship? For the last two years, I've worked in Japan as a Marine. What I witnessed there was damnable American imperialism. You... What do you mean by imperialism? Okinawa. Okinawa. Iwakuni. Iwakuni. Hatsugi. Hatsugi. They are colonized by America. I can understand your feelings. You said you'd already sworn loyalty to the Soviet Union? I worked as a radar operator in Hatsugi. I have, I have agreed, agreed to provide, to provide the, the Soviets, Soviets specialized, specialized knowledge, knowledge from my time, from time in the Marines. Marines. It is very valuable information. It is very valuable information. It is very valuable information. Everyone who talked to him said he appeared to have been rehearsed. The fact that everybody says that, that he appeared to be rehearsed is very strong evidence. It's not just one person. You have four people telling you the same story. It's, it's fairly convincing. Oswald's behavior at the U.S. Embassy in Moscow raised suspicions. Hang on. Send it to Washington right away. Yes, sir. I'm on it. Yeah. The State Department reported on the situation to CIA headquarters. This is the one. Going back and looking at the internal record of all of Oswald's files, What does Newman mean by false defector? This internal CIA document provides a clue. It records the agency division that gathered information about Oswald. Here, we see the initials CI. Counterintelligence, that's what the CI stands for. The CI is counterintelligence, very high level of so it's very hard to separate what Oswald's doing and saying and all the traffic he's creating in Moscow with his defection, how it has to be related. Of course it's related to the mole hunt going on in the CIA at the same time. Newman zeroes in on the fact that Oswald information was handled by CI. Was Oswald being used in a mole hunt, an effort to identify spies within the agency?
With the Cold War heating up in the late 1950s, the CIA was wary of moles, KGB spies undercover inside the agency itself. Once Oswald defected, the KGB would want to find out who he really was. To do that, they would contact their mole inside the CIA, who would provide them the information. While the CIA suspected a mole in the Soviet division, they ran Oswald's file through counterintelligence. Why? Because any mole looking for Oswald's files would have to go poking around for them. The searcher would be exposed. Oswald was in the middle of the KGB CIA spy wars, the middle of moles. Oswald was a pawn, not on the, the side of the chessboard, but right there in the four center squares between the KGB and the CIA and our penetration of each other. Oswald was in the middle of that. That makes him a pawn, but a very important pawn. And so you can't deny that uh, there were useful idiots, d disposable people. Oswald spent the next two and a half years living in the Soviet Union the country of his dreams. But... He wrote in his diary that life under communism was far from how he had idealized it. No man, having known, having lived under the Russian communist and American capitalist system, could possibly make a choice between them. There is no choice. One offers oppression, the other, poverty. Both offer imperialistic injustice tinted with two brands of slavery. Then, one day, 15 months into his new life, John Kennedy, новый президент Соединенных Штатов Америки, отправляется к зданию Конгресса. Затем Кеннеди выступил с речью. News from the U.S. set in motion a series of events that would bring Oswald to ruin. To those nations who would make themselves our adversary, we offer not a pledge, but a request that both sides begin anew the quest for peace. John F. Kennedy had become the 35th president of the United States. Kennedy vowed to pursue a peaceful resolution to the Cold War, idealism that gave the U.S. hope for a new era. On the 20th of January, 1961, Pennsylvania Avenue was a host to a new president, a new face, a new waving hand, and a new frontier. Where Pennsylvania Avenue ended, the White House took over. But just two and a half years later, Kennedy's presidency was cut short by assassination. Who killed Kennedy? The USSR? Cuba? The Mafia? The military establishment? The assassination has spawned countless theories. In 2019, the group of 66 campaigners announced a new interpretation based on their ongoing investigation. Naturally, one would assume that the CIA was among those top elements. One of the 66 campaigners for the truth is a close relative of slain President John F. Kennedy. Oh, nine years old. 
old at this time. Yeah. Too. Mm. JFK's nephew, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. He continues to hope that media coverage will shed new light on the JFK assassination. His father, Robert, was John F. Kennedy's younger brother and served as his attorney general. Four years after JFK's assassination, he too was shot to death. The CIA, we know, lied about it beginning the moment that my uncle was killed. And the CIA has been lying about it for 50 years. And I think my uncle became president and found himself immediately in a war. He was surrounded by military and intelligence apparatus who wanted to ch try and change this country into a national security state. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. maintains that the CIA is concealing the truth. But how could an agency then reporting directly to the president carry out such a betrayal? This is a document that sheds light on that betrayal. An Inspector General's report that logged internal policy discussions which would not normally come into the public eye. It mentions plans to assassinate Cuban leader Fidel Castro. As Kennedy was assuming the presidency, Castro was turning Cuba off the US coast into a communist state with close ties to the Soviets. Tensions were high. At the time, the CIA was covertly plotting to assassinate Castro. Later, when this plot was revealed, the CIA said that President Kennedy had approved it. But the Inspector General's report reveals that the CIA pursued the plan without having cleared it with the highest levels of government. The CIA also tried to make it appear that the Kennedy administration had been instrumental in planning these operations. My father and uh, John Kennedy were aware of the, um, of the assassination plots against Castro before, and it's completely untrue. And his attitude was, we don't care if you're communist. We would prefer that you have freedom. You know, nevertheless, I would say the majority of people in this country believe that slander because of the, the artful way that the CIA had of planting those kind of slanders in the newspapers and in the public consciousness. And this is what they do. A president who wanted peace and a CIA that was willing to risk even war in the name of national security. This executive branch confrontation escalated to a shocking degree. In April 1961, the confrontation came to a head over the infamous Bay of Pigs invasion. As this political crisis churned, Lee Harvey Oswald returned to the United States. soldier returned from the USSR. Do Americans understand the value of that? <laughs> oh, well, come on, let's go inside, huh? A former US Marine who had defected to the Soviets 
now suddenly returning to his homeland. And bringing with him his Russian wife, Marina. There are glimpses of CIA involvement after Oswald's homecoming too. The couple settled back into American life with the help of this man. George de Morinshield. Some years after the JFK assassination, he died in an apparent suicide. Before his death, he admitted that he had links with the CIA. Oswald and the CIA. What linked them to Kennedy? Oswald's widow, Marina, testified after the assassination, and those transcripts are in the public record. They reveal Oswald's emotional instability after he returned to the US. Have a seat. Please sit down. He changed. My husband changed completely after coming to America. He became angry at small things. I never know him as such man in Soviet. Was he violent towards you? Yes. Do you recall what brought that about? He wanted to send me back to Soviet. I did not want to go, so we fought. Do you understand? You can't leave your child. A mother can't leave her child. You try to send us back to Soviet. Oh, that has nothing to do with this. Do you love me, Lee? Why did we come to America? You tell me why. What are you thinking? I have no idea. You'll never understand. You'll never understand! You should just go back to your country. I have no idea what he's thinking. During that time, Lee was very nervous about something. I think he mm, somehow mm, calmed himself down through violence. She testified that Oswald was responsible for another Dallas shooting. one that happened six months before Kennedy's assassination. Did you notice the rifle missing on April 10th, 1963? No, but I knew Lee preparing for something. Told me not to go into his room. I did not know what he planning to do. Oswald's target was retired General Edwin Walker. Walker was regarded as an ardent fascist. Defend our country against communism. And what we need now is patriotism. I 
one night he he went out and not returned. Oh, locked out. Need a drink. After 10 p.m., I began to worry. I went into his room. I was drawn to it. And that is when I saw the note. Yeah. What did the note say? It said... If anything bad happens to me, please inform the embassy. Dan sent everything the newspaper writes about me to them. Once the embassy knows everything, they should help you. I've left whatever money I can to you. You and the baby have enough to live on $10 a week for two months. If I'm alive, if I'm alive and in jail, I'll be in the jail at the end of the bridge we always cross to go into town. Three months until the Dallas Parade. Age 24, grew up in Dallas. He's our guy. Lee, why did you miss? He told me not to ask any more questions. You work with us and live a new life. Are you trying to threaten me? No. You will be a hero which we would say would be the cover story. Next time, we'll hear from people who worked for the CIA. That's gonna resemble James Bond. Their views of how the assassination happened. I knew a lot of crazy people in the CIA. Who they think really arranged it. <laughs> and the events of the fateful day itself. Start a new life tomorrow. I promise. Decades later, a new picture of the truth is emerging.